Number 44, in this figure here, a stationary block explodes in two pieces L and R that slide across a frictionless floor and then into regions with friction, where they stop. Piece L with a mass of 2 kg encounters a coefficient of kinetic friction mu L equals to 0.4 and slides to a stop in distance dL equals to 0.15 meters. Piece R encounters a coefficient of kinetic friction mu R equals to 0.5 and slides to a stop in distance dr equals to 0.25 meters. What was the mass of the block? Okay, so what's happening here is that this block explodes. We don't know the side of, size of each part. This part we are calling it L and the other part we are calling it R. We know the mass of the part L, which is ML and the part R we don't know its mass. So our goal here is to find MR. So we can sum ML and MR and then we got the mass of the block, the initial mass of the block. So one thing that we have to analyze here is that when the part of the block reaches this spot here, that's where the friction starts, it has some kinetic energy, let's say for example the kinetic energy of the block L. And it is equal, equal to the mass of the block times its speed squared. So let's say that its initial speed is VL. And for this block, it would be VR. So it is VL over two. And we know that friction takes away all this energy. So this all this energy is taken away by the work from friction. And let's remember that work is just some force times some distance. And in this case, the force is the friction force. And the friction force, since the blocks are moving, it's going to be kinetic mu times the normal force. So that's the force from the friction which comes it goes there and then we know the work from friction okay so we need the normal force and the normal force in this case since we only have we don't have any additional force there the normal force just balance the gravitational force so the normal force would simply be the mass times gravity right so generically speaking that's what we have so the work from friction would be mu k f and d which is equal to mu k m g d so that's the work done if in fact the work is negative because it's taking away energy right so Let's write like this, the kinetic energy plus the work done will be zero. So we know that, we send it to the other side, we know that the kinetic energy will be equal to plus mu k m g d. So in, the, in this case for the L object, m L v L squared over 2 is equal to mu L M L G D L and for the the R block we have that M R V R squared over 2 would be equal to mu R M R G D R so we can cross out the masses over here and then we have that let's see we have v l squared over 2 is equal to mu l g d 2 we also have that v r squared over 2 is equal to mu r g d R. This is not D2, this is DL. DL. 
this is some L. Okay, so those are the two equations that we have right now, but we need some additional equations. So first let's see what we got here. So we have this value here, this value, this value, this value, this value, this value. We don't know their speeds, right? We don't know their speeds. So now we have to apply conservation of linear momentum. So we got some information about their speeds. So we are going to use the equation for conservation of linear momentum before they start losing energy to friction. So because when you have the friction, then you, you don't have conservation of linear momentum because you have some external forces acting on your object. So this is just after the explosion occurs. So we know that the initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum and the initial momentum is zero because the blocks are at rest. So this is zero. Therefore, we know that the final momentum is zero. Okay. So the final momentum is the sum of the mass of the blocks L times its velocity plus the mass of the block R times its velocity and this must be equal to zero so what we are going to do here it's some trick I'm going to show you so I'm going to send this to the other side so it goes like this so ML VL equals to minus MR VR so I'm going to send the mass to this side and V sorry and V to this side so this is going to be minus ML over MR and this is equal to VR over VL so you might think that this doesn't help us however we have VR over VL and if we divide one equation by the other we will get VR over VL as well and then we can find MR so that's what we're going to do I'm going to take this equation over here so this let's represent it by some square and I'm going to divide it by the red square that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to have let's see VR is squared which is equal to me mu r g dr over vl squared equal to mu l g dl so we can cross out the g's over here so now we have that v r over vl squared is equal to mi r over mu l times d r over d l sorry and now we can replace this over here so minus mu mi mass m l over m r squared is equal to mu r over mu l times d r over d l <sighs> okay we don't know well just let's replace this it will be easier i'm not sure so i'm just going to isolate m r so m l squared is equal to mu r over mu l d r over d l times m r squared the minus sign disappear because it is squared right so let's see what i can do so m r is equal to m l times the square root of mu l over mu r times d r o d l over 
the L over the R and this is 1.39 kilograms we just need to replace the letters by the numbers because we have everything so now that's it we are done so the mass is just MR plus ML which is 1.39 plus 2 right so the final answer is 3.39 kilograms and that's it